Okay, so this uh, file, we want to summarize everything and we'll arrive at uh, the conclusion of the whole playlist, the whole part of the chapter that relates the electric field and potential. So remember, there's if you have any charge distribution, whether it's point charges, line charge, volume charge, surface charge, you can always express the effect of these charges in space by expressing them in terms of an electric field vector at every single point in space. So you can express the effect of charges by an electric field. And the electric field is a vector field. So at every point you have a vector. Then we found an alternative way to describe the effect of charges in space by not giving a vector at every point, but by giving a number. And this number is called the potential. And we found a way to relate the potential way of looking at the problem and the electric field vector way of looking at the problem by we can go from one to the other. So in this case, we can go from the potential point of view to the electric field point of view by simple differentiation. If you know the potential everywhere in space, if you know V, then you can get E. And the opposite uh, way is also, no, we, we also did that in detail. If you know the electric field at every single point in space, how would you get the difference in potential between two points in space? So this is the other way of good looking at it. And this is the summary of how you can relate the two points of view of looking at a problem. Okay, so we did in the, in the chapter on electric field, we were able to get the electric field at a point in space due to many point charges. And we were able to get the electric field at a point in space due to continuous charge distributions. And these were the equations what, that we used. So what we're proposing then in this part of the chapter and what we did in detail so far is how to get also the electric field but on, on a different path. The different path, first you get the potential and getting the potential is very easy, it's nice because you can get the potential due to point charges by adding numbers and you can get the potential due to continuous charge distributions by also adding numbers. It's a scalar, so it's a number in the end. It doesn't have components. It doesn't have X, Y, and Z components. It's just a number. And once you know the potential and you want to get the electric field, you just do a simple differentiation. Differentiation is always easy to do. So this is, again, illustrating why we went through this whole process of defining potential. When you get the electric field, it's quite difficult to do these summations or these integrations because in this integration, for instance, you have three components. You have the x component, this r hat vector, it has an x, y, and z component. So you have three integrations actually to do to get this electric field. But over here, you only have one integration to do. So it's much easier to sum numbers than it is to sum vectors. Here you're adding vectors. So that's why going from here to here is much easier than going from here to here. So the, 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 the downside is that you have to do two steps. So, but this, the nice thing is that the second step, when you know the potential and you want to get the electric field, it's just very easy because you get, you're doing a differentiation. So, that's, so this summarizes the, the idea of potential and how potential is related to electric field and how it's an alternative way to get the electric field. And I, I hope that this is very important to, to be understood in detail before we proceed to uh, for other concepts in the chapter on potential.